Georgia, Florida State, a very underrated and very good yes. Seminole ball club, by the way. The dunking cardinal is mid-court. That's the big logo on the floor. And the opening half is controlled by the Cardinals. Fresh Kemble, the graduate transfer from St. Joseph, running the point for Louisville. We have a look at the Louisville starting five. A little high, low inside, opening with a high percentage shot, Stephen Enoch. It's going to be interesting to see whether they were comfortable and patient against the zone. They were clearly prepared. That high low is going to be there all night. John, zone's not something that Miami has done a lot of this year, but they're very short-handed tonight. Only eight guys dressed and really only seven healthy. Freshman Harlan Beverly has had a shoulder problem, but he's going to try to give it a go off the bench. Larenega is going to have to keep his team out of foul trouble as best he can, and maybe the zone will help not only that, but help their defense, which has struggled as Jordan Wara makes his first shot. And to me, the way I see it is there are two types of teams that play zone. There are the teams that it is a part of their identity, the, the Syracuse zone. It's a part of their identity. Temple back in the day with a matchup zone. And then there are the teams that are desperate trying to find good defense, and I feel like that's where Miami is. You've got to protect players because you have some guys that are going to need to play 40 minutes, that being one of them. Chris Likes. And Chris Likes, the leading scorer for the Hurricanes, who had a rough game Saturday against Duke, just 2 of 15, but Likes, very capable, averaging 15 and 9, makes a long three. Enoch, very capable of shooting from the outside. The big man had one rattle out. One of the more talented big guys in the country, just looking for consistency and perhaps playing with a little more uh, instinctiveness, a little instinctual awareness. But what makes him so good is the motor. He just goes. He plays hard. And that's the thing. When you've got that size and athleticism, playing hard makes you dominant. Here comes Wara, who in that loss to Florida State Saturday was brilliant at 32 points as Enoch has one roll out. And Rodney Miller, much better physical condition this year, trimmed down, grabs a rebound. The biggest thing for Miami to me is, is getting back in transition. You know, you're not going to send a lot to the offensive glass, which means you've got to limit it. You've got to limit opportunities in transition for Louisville. E.J. Vasilovich leaves it on the front of the rim. Here comes Darius Perry. Fresh Kemble attacking Miller. The follow by Enoch is no good. Sam Wardenberg, who's also playing with a little bit of a gimpy knee, some tendonitis, grabs the rebound. Well, you can see it just slow to get back down into the offensive end of the floor. Be limited offensively and on the defensive end. Likes with the pull up and Chris Likes with the first five, and Miami has a one point lead. How about all the numbers off the dribble jump shots for Miami? I think it's a terrific stat because no one does it anymore. The mid range game isn't dead in Miami, apparently. One for three. And Jordan Wara and Chris Likes. Offensive leaders for their respective teams, both with five out of the game. A little bit of a quiet feel here in KFC Yum Center. Zone does that sometimes. <laughs> it's just a slow start. There's really no rhythm yet. You get open looks, they go in, and it feels kind of ho-hum. E.J. Vasilovich, excellent three-point shooter. Hasn't shot it as well of late, but couldn't get that one to go, and the foul is going to be called on Miller. It's his first. There is Chris Mack in his second season as a head coach of the Cardinals. Got his team to the NCAA a year ago, and is really one of the one of the terrific coaches yes. in the country. How patient do you think Volvo fans are? Well, because there's a little bit of a process to what he's doing. It's kind of recreating an identity for the program, a culture for the program, and it does take time. The expectations are incredibly high. There's a lot of little things that they've got to do right for them to reach their potential. But this is still a Final Four caliber team. Well, we were talking to Bob Valvano before the game, who has a radio show here in Louisville, the voice of the Cardinals for many years, works with us on ESPN Radio as well. And Bobby V was saying that there's been widespread panic that set in after the two straight losses. But, you know, Louisville hasn't beaten a major college team in a month. Of the start of it. Most of that's product of the schedule, but the two losses in a row kind of rattled some cages around here. Well, you beat Big Blue, and I think there's a lot less conversation. Oh, for sure. And that, that's been a Grace, problem, Grace sets in with the fan base if you beat Big Blue. And I, think, and I say it's not about the loss. It's about how they lost the game. Not making foul shots. It's less a physical thing. It's more a mental thing. And the mental toughness is what's in question with this group. 
And fair to say, too, this is not a poor free throw shooting team no. that missed free throws. It's a good free throw shooting team that shot under 50% for the game. And that lost to Wildcats. The best teams know how to close, and I think that'll always be the question until they prove that they could beat some of the best teams in the country. There's Dwayne Sutton at the rim. He's sort of the tough guy, and nobody ever questions his toughness. Well, physical toughness and that, that finisher mentality is different. I think that's something that Chris Mack's trying to find. Who are his finishers? Who are his closers? Likes turns it over. He's the only guy that's made a basket. Warren's going to get the offensive foul, and they just shoved Likes out of the way. Likes told me today he wanted to be a pass to get up under guys, and he just did it to Jordan Moore and made him pick up a cheap foul. Back to work, and he told me there was no better way to get past those nerves than to get in the gym. Now, Likes knows he will face an angry Louisville team that is ready to limit his mobility and make his life miserable, but that 5'7 guard smiled at me big time when I asked him, hey, are you ready for it this time? Well, Brooke, he had a good second half in the first meeting, but only scored four points in the first half. Louisville used like a 17 nothing run in the first half to take control of that game. They were up by 19 at the break and sort of coast at home. That victory on the road. David Johnson has checked in, a highly touted freshman from Louisville, just turned the ball over, played his high school ball here. They've got a lot of high hopes for him. Really good athlete, good ball handler, has good size. He's guarding lights. If you're going to guard lights, you always have to play him off the ball as if he's trying to get it back. I mean, that's really the biggest key because that's how it creates space. He fakes you back or he fakes screens, but it's always about him getting the ball back. Chris Mack has gone into his bench. Malik Williams, who just picked up that loose ball, and Ryan McMahon, who has it now, both off the bench. Ryan spent a lot of time starting this year. Sutton lines up for three and hasn't shot the ball to his capabilities of late. Offensively for, for Miami, Likes gets shots based on how his teammates space. If they're not creating enough space for him to go to work, he's going to have struggles. And Wardenberg steps on his mid-court line, so it's an over back. It'll be a turnover for the Hurricanes. Miami down 9-5 in the early going for Jim Laranaga in his ninth season in Coral Gables, taking the Canes to two sweet 16s. Jim, 70 years old, had a tremendous career, and continues to do so get himself both both coaches uh, have had spent some time in the training room. Uh, jim's had some back issues he said the, the physical therapy's done him wonders and chris mack had knee replacement in the offseason you think about miami we were watching warm-ups they've got eight guys dressed you know those trainers are working hard <laughs> This is what Chris said. We asked Chris about spending some time in the training room. So they've got more important, guys. <laughs> they have more important guys to deal with than me. His likes picked up that foul. It was his first. And Sutton makes it a 10-5 lead. You have more, you've got more suits than you've got jerseys. That's an issue. And here's why it's an issue. It's not just an issue because you don't have a ton of guys to play. It's, it's, it's an issue because you can't simulate game-like uh, situations in practice. So it's really hard to get you guys ready for a game if you can't play with competition in practice. Cam, Cam McGusty, I'm sorry, John, the Oklahoma transfer with his first basket. It's okay, I'm a stream of consciousness. <laughs> sorry. You, you can't simulate, but you also you struggle to hold guys accountable to play a certain way as well. So it is a great challenge as a coach when you can't go full 5 on 5 Oh, did Ryan McMahon need that one? Over three from three and just two points against Florida State. He started off the season really shooting the ball well. And it hit just seven of his last 25 from three after shooting 50% in the first nine games of the season. Mcgusty driving has a shot blocked by Sutton. Likes draws some contact, no call inside. And here comes Dwayne Sutton. McMahon may try it again. No, gives it up to Williams. And Mcgusty will be called for the foul. And I actually love the no call. You kind of had a little hint of it was probably a foul, but coaches are teaching players how to go straight up. That right to verticality, you have rights to that space. And let's see if he goes straight up. Look, he elevates, he goes straight up, no contact with the arms. That's what coaches are teaching. And I'll tell you what, if officials call that a foul, coaches are frustrated because they tell the official, that's what I'm teaching my players to do. 
I like the no call. <laughs> I just think Likes gets the raw end of a lot of calls oh, when he drives. Absolutely he sometimes. does. In that case, he did not. Absolutely he does. I, I, I do appreciate that they call it the way they're saying that players, they, they come into early season situations and they say, this is what we're going to do. We're going to call that wall up. We're going to allow that right to verticality. Players are adapting to it. So it's good to see the officials doing the same. John, you'll find, and this is our first game working together, but you'll find I'm, I'm a champion of, of the little man, the blue collar, the hardworking people. I sure should be. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> good no call, good defense by Louisville. The turnover from the freshman Beverly McMahon pushing, puts it up top, and on the business end, finishing his Malik Williams. So to me, that play, that play for Ryan McMahon is as big as a made shot. When you think about a guy getting confidence, you get more confidence out of making your team better than you do about knocking a three down. That's big for Ryan McMahon. Well, McMahon has done the one thing that shoot at Miami back here at KFC Young Center. Reese Davis, John Crispin, and Brooke Weisbrod. Miami has just one bucket in their last 10 trips. As we check in with Brooke, what you heard on the Louisville sideline. A lot of great talk from the players, actually. Malik Williams, very vocal in that timeout, just talking to the guys about, hey, that's my bad, but let's make sure that we make our free throws. Let's, let's do the little things that make this count. And then Fresh Kimball talking about defense. Chris Mack coming in to just secure the point. Hey, guys, don't bite on ball fakes. Let's stay down. John Brooke was talking today. The three of us were talking about what you would see from Louisville in the early going given their last two games. So we're a little over eight minutes yeah. in. What have you seen in terms of competitive spirit and then irritation about what's happened within the last couple of times out? Well, when I say sense of urgency coming into this game, it, it doesn't mean run around like crazy. It, it means have an attention to detail, value the little things, and they have done that. Now, part of this is they were able to find rhythm early in this game against the zone, and sometimes when you can move the ball around with ease, you create rhythm for yourselves, and that's why they're shooting a high percentage, get the shots they're looking for. And that gives you confidence to play even harder on the defensive end. Cecilovich fading and Sutton with another rebound. Here comes Kimball. Now they're also able to rebound every single miss from Miami. There might be one, if, if not any, uh, going to the offensive glass for Miami. Williams gets really deep post position and scores right over the freshman Anthony Walker. I had a note when I was preparing for this game on Miami where they have to play defense early. That means you've got to win position if you want to win the possession. They gave up early early position in, in that possession, and it was an easy bucket. I'd say that a few times. I was going to say. Goodness gracious. A book of tongue twisters working yeah. overtime already. But Miami hasn't been a great defensive team, no. really, in any respect this year. They're trying to find the right defense. Yeah. Wardenberg with a strong drive, but blocked by the bottom of the rim, and here comes McMahon. And finding the right defense may be a game-by-game -game basis. Kind of day-to-day like an ankle injury. Kick out and swing, Sam Williamson into the game. Another freshman. He's curling, lost his balance, and now Miami has it. Beverly up ahead, and Beverly with that left hand, the left arm that he couldn't yeah. really raise <laughs> above his head during shoot around. We're not kidding either. No, he, no, he, not at all. He he actually, this is it. the proper use of the term literally. Yeah. He actually literally couldn't pick up his left arm, and he actually finished that one pretty cleanly. The man a little long in the three. Kimball has the rebound and a fresh 20 for fresh. Williams, no. Williamson soaring in, gets a hand on him. Walker trying to corral it. He can't, and it'll stay with the Cardinals. Coming up next, over on ESPN, 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Louisville fans will be looking forward to this so they can root against Kentucky. Kentucky and Georgia. You can always watch it live on the ESPN app. Cats have won 12 in a row against the Dogs. Last time they lost was 2013, but Georgia coming off that victory against Memphis, got one of the most exciting young players in the yep. country. Anthony Edwards averaging 18 and five, and number two prospect for the upcoming NBA draft. At the moment. What do you think of Edwards? I think he's terrific. I think we leave out Rayshon Hammond, so. This is a guy of what, 14 and nine? You're not the same team without him, so I think we forget sometimes there are some other guys. Wow. I just gotta stop talking when he's got the ball. So I stream of consciousness. Warren with his second three, he has eight. Coming off that 32-point performance against Florida State, in which the whole team only scored 65. The Ville has its largest lead at 11, and 
the first half starting to go a little bit like the first meeting of the season down in Coral Gables. Another miss for the Hurricanes. And it's really early. And the last time I was in this building, Louisville squandered a 23-point lead to Duke in about eight yeah. minutes and change. So I'm certainly not calling it over, but it's starting to get into a little bit of a danger situation. Miami needs to find something as Walker's call for his first foul. And if that shot is going to go, look, I think Jordan War is already the toughest matchup in the country. And there may be better players, and that is to be determined. I think it's too early to say who the best player in the country is, but... There's not a tougher matchup. He's a four man who can play like a point guard, a scoring point guard. Wardenberg and Enoch were locked up in the paint, and Wardenberg's going to have the foul called on him, the red shirt junior from New Zealand. It's his first. My favorite things about Jordan Orr is, is when he gets a rebound defensively, he can push it. Very rarely do you see someone stop the four man with the ball. Guards get out and defend the perimeter, and he's just got a head of steam, kind of LeBron James esque, and gets to the basket. A long three pointer by Darius Perry. <laughs> Shooting 36% from three on the year. Not a great shooter, but a good athlete. Really learned to play with better pace and change of pace as Likes has his shot blocked in the roll. Wara, good lead for Samuelson, who gets it to block and one. How about the fact that you have a, a point four, right? Point fours are what we talk about in the NBA. Those are the guys that are just so just so difficult to defend. The block on one end, Jordan Wara is the guy that gets it. It's just a perfect pass. I mean, just a sit-down, simple pass. Perfectly executed break. Foul was on the freshman Isaiah Wong, who's getting some time. Made his debut against the Cardinals, scored a bucket the first time with all the injuries the Hurricanes have had. He's getting some run in the first half here, and the lead is 16 for the Cardinals. Cuts off Wardenberg, and then Williamson steps in there, and they're going to call him for the foul. The freshman from Rockwall, Texas, picks up his first. You know, coming into this game, Louisville loses two in a row. You want to see who they are in shoot-around, in practice. And, and who I saw was a communicative, excuse me, communicative team that is locked into doing the little things right, and I think that is Chris Mack. And you've seen the response so far to start this game. A comfortable team, a vocal team, and an aggressive team. That's what makes them a legitimate Final Four contender. But they've got to continue this against high-level team. That's always been the question this year. Samuel Williamson, full of talent. Look, it's, it's not just about being tough. It's about being a closer. You know, it, we think of mental toughness. Well, part of that is knowing how to finish a game. And, and I want to see if they can finish a half. That's a first start. Can you... Can you really make it a point to finish this half strong? That's going to tell me something about this team. I mean, mental toughness is one thing. I think the mental toughness was exposed missing so many foul shots against Kentucky in a pressure situation when expectations are high. You're one of the top teams in the country. But ultimately, you've got to close if you're one of the best teams in the country. Yeah, it, look, I want to clarify because I don't, I don't think that you're, you're not necessarily saying they don't have any mental toughness. No, you're just saying they no, need to, the, if they are going to, reach the goals that they aspire to reach, Final Four, contend for the national championship, then there needs to be the next yeah, step right. taken. Thank you. Fair we, enough. We do. Yeah. We, we live in a sensitive world, so yeah. everything has to have a caveat. We make sure everyone here. feels good about this. <laughs> Look, everyone out there, local fans, tell me if I'm wrong. You have high expectations not only for this team but for this program. Team with high expectations will be held to a higher standard. The higher standard ultimately is a team that can close, a team that is mentally tough, a team that makes those big foul shots against a, a, a big time uh, uh, rival like Kentucky. So you were talking about earlier today and sharing all of the backstage information about failure oh, being the great teacher, yeah, right? Yoda. Yoda. Yeah. Okay. So if that is the case, what can Louisville learn? Texas Tech lost, yeah. in which they shot early and hurt themselves offensively. Kentucky, free throw shooting, and then the game against Florida State. What can they learn from well, those losses? First and foremost, learn the truth about college basketball in general, which is everybody's good, but no one's that good. You're not that good. You're not without vulnerability. 
We're going to take a break. Stop this little two-game mini skid. The Cardinals are on. Once ranked first in the country, now ranked 13th, but still a force in the ACC. See, winning at a high level, we say this all the time, winning at a high level is a byproduct of doing a lot of little things right. And at times, when you think you're really good, you forget to do the little things right. And that's ultimately what Louisville has to get back to. Lights fires one up and drew the foul. And Chris Lights will get to the free throw line. Darius Perry is called for the foul. So Chris Mack, he tried to show the official what Likes did in terms of spreading his feet out on the shot. I don't know if any argument's ever been won. Has it? <laughs> Likes hits the first of three, an 80% free throw shooter, Brooke. Well, it's interesting just to watch him really work in the paint and, and get away from defenders. He plays so low, and at 5'7", he talks about how much he has to have the mindset to prove that he belongs in the ACC. You can take a look at his numbers as uh, the only player of 5'7 or shorter, uh, second leading scorer in the country. And he says, since I've been playing basketball, I've always been undersized. It just feels natural to me to, to make a play off the dribble. But what we talked about today in practice was getting past that first defender and utilizing some of that mid-range space to go up and shoot. And he says one of his favorite moves that he likes to make, he takes it off John Wall, where his body's going one direction and so are his eyes, but he sells that move with his eyes and heads the other way. I was 6'1", and I felt like I always had something to prove. I cannot imagine being five foot seven with the length and athleticism that's on the floor and being as effective as Chris Likes is. It's remarkable. He, he is a, an elite athlete. Plays in football, played lacrosse. Uh, you know, Larinaga perhaps risking a little bit of hyperbole as McGusty knocks in a three. Saying that if Likes were 6'6", six, six, uh, he invoked the name Michael Jordan. Hyperbolic for sure, yes. but you get the point. I mean, you get the point that he he's a terrific player. We wouldn't characterize him as a terrific small player. Yeah. We would just say he is a great and dynamic player, which he is. Strong move by Enon. Good contest in there from Wardenburg. Vasilovich pulls it out for the Canes. But well, part of that is the mentality that he has. Yet if he was 6'6", he might not have that mentality. So because he's 5'7", he's got the right mentality to compete at such a high level. And I just like how honest he is with himself. I mean, he understands his size and, and what he's got to do more so than the other guys, which is you got to work harder off the dribble, you got to separate yourself, and that comes with speed and strength. And, I mean, you see his stature. He's, he's got both. And you just have to learn how to use them. And we've seen some mid-range jump shots in this game, but I don't know about you, John, but I'd like to see more. Yes. Yeah, you know, look, I, I'd like to see more good shots. The problem is... The defense for Louisville's been good, and also when you miss easy, quicker, open, quick shots early, it's been easy all defensive rebounds for Louisville, and they're off and running. So no rhythm offensively for Miami yet. And Sam Wardenberg went to the bench, limping yeah. on that right knee, which he has a compression wrap on. He's been dealing with tendonitis, an already thin team, and Wardenberg is now headed back toward the locker room to be looked at in a long three is knocked down by likes he has 11 bouncing back from his subpar by his standard outing against Duke Harry with a nifty move and that bucket's gonna count Goldton's gonna be calling on Miller I think the ball, ball was under the rim it was under the rim but they have made contact with the rim the ball is underneath us you know every coach out there who's playing against Miami is gonna show tape for that Illini game yeah that, that, wasn't, that wasn't going in yeah. Did the defender hit the rim? Yeah, he grazed it, but the ball didn't have a chance. But you're going to show that tape because you show the potential of this kid. He won that game by just attacking and knocking down shots. He's that dangerous. Mike's getting space, getting to the bucket. He's got 13. Yeah, and he's got the ability to make you look silly. Uh, I mean, that's just true. Nate Robinson, same thing. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not fair to Nate Robinson or Chris Lutz. They're not good. Laura working on young Isaiah Wong. And comes up short. Miami down 15. It has been anything but pretty so far. We finished the half strong. Sort of what you were talking about earlier, John. The Canes can make a game of it. And likes perhaps rushing it a little. Also perhaps feeling the weight that he's really been the only guy to get anything going so far. 
you just feel the rhythm is kind of oh. skate look, that's just pretty. Oh, and Sutton blew the layup off the great cut and pass. Half pretty. Finish to your point. Yes. Long shot it from 22 and shot it 24. And War is fouled by McGusty on his. Welcome back to Louisville. The Cardinals a big lead over Miami. And Jordan Wara, who made the decision to come back for his junior season, has been rewarded. The preseason AP All-American and preseason ACC Player of the Year also made the preseason top 50 Wooden Award candidate. And that reminds me, do not forget to tune in Wednesday, Wednesday for the Wooden Award midseason top 25 specials but, uh, provided by Wendy's, or presented by Wendy's. The men's preseason list of 50 players gets cut in half. The women's top 30 is trimmed to 25. It all starts at 6.30 Eastern time on ESPNU. Who would you vote for right now? Best player, John. Oh, gosh. It's just so hard because I believe the best player on the best team. That's just who I am. I, I just, I, I want to see winners win those awards. So it's hard to say. I, I don't want to be a political right now, but like, it, it's it, it's impossible to say. I, I think so Duke, would you, Vernon Carey? Yeah, Duke? I think Duke has the highest upside. Okay. You know, I feel like we're talking NBA draft. Like, oh, they have the highest ceiling, the big upside. <laughs> well, they do. They have great potential. If they can be a really good defensive team, if they can knock down open threes, that's that's going to be the challenge. But you take away the Stephen F. Austin loss, and there's no question whether they're the best team in the country. Vasilovic gets into the paint. And foul that is called on Kimball. It is Kimball's first. Vasilovic of Serbian descent. He was born in Calgary, but he moved to Australia at the age of six. And of course, the bushfire crisis in Australia has really gripped and inspired many to be generous. And DJ is donating five dollars for every three-pointer made in ACC play to aid that bushfire crisis to date because of the things that he has done to go fund me up near six thousand dollars and uh, thankfully yeah. i think our friends in australia got a little bit of rain and hopefully will will help with that tragic crisis that has killed so many in the wildlife and destroyed yeah. property out there just a sad thing to see and dj doing his part to help to help his homeland well, if you have a chance and you're watching this game, just pull it up on your phone. Look at some of the images. It gives you great perspective. The way they celebrated rain. We don't celebrate rain like that. We get miserable when it rains. They celebrated rain because of what it meant for the area. So I mean, it's just a very gracious thing for him to do as well. We've seen a number of players do that. Show them the platform that they have and the way yeah. people respond to them. And Miami sorely needed someone to help out on offense other than... Chris Lang says McGusty has now hit three three-pointers. He has nine. Kane scratched back to 12. But Vasilovich is a guy who has continued to improve. I think he's really improved his physical conditioning this year. Sutton missed an easy one earlier, missed, made a tough one. But, uh, you know, Vasilovich is a dangerous shooter. He's not shooting his best right now. He's been scuffling a little bit from the perimeter. But the platform that he has and the attention that he's drawn to that crisis is certainly admirable. Chris likes. Here comes Wara pushing, as you've talked about. Yeah, I like it. I like when he pushes because guards can run the wings. Pigs just get to the basket. And someone's got to stop Jordan Wara with the basketball. Malik Williams working, working, fire, following his own shot, but likes digs it out. Vasilovic for three. And that's where he's gotten a lot better is off the bounce. He was a catch-and-shoot type shooter. Now everything's coming off the bounce because guys are trying to run him off the line. College teams understand you got to defend the three-point line and you got to protect the rim. War answers. Not much you can do about that. He's physical enough where if you have a poor closeout, he will beat you to the basket and you're done. He likes it at the foul line for an and one. So you just have to contest those threes and hope he misses. Jordan hope up. you get a rebound. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan up to 13 points. Mcgusty working on him. And Mcgusty's made three, and 
Didn't quite get the fourth one to go, and here comes War as we head down towards 60 seconds to play here in the first half in Louisville. Cardinals have pretty much controlled this thing from the tip. War working on Miller, who has two fouls, or rather Williams, I should say. He might have settled for that one, and Wong pulls it out. About a 14, 15 second difference in shot clock and game clock. Wong. He's going to draw the end one. It was a little awkward looking yeah, I'm, going. I'm glad, you said it. It, I'm glad you said it. But it worked. It, it was completely awkward. It, I, I don't know. It, it's like a, a Euro step back. I don't even know what this was. It took contact. How he got that thing up before? Yeah, before it just being an on the floor foul and I mean, he come back down. Finished in a yoga pose. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah, it was awkward. Every now and then you get it right like that. You know? Isaiah is a freshman from Piscataway, New Jersey. He's thought of as a potential explosive scorer. Really got off to a little bit of a slow start in his collegiate career. Shot under 25% for his first four games. But since then, in some limited minutes, shooting better than 40% from the floor. And effective three-point play there. And the Hurricanes draw with 11, still within striking distance here after a less than perfect first half. The transition is really hard. The transition from, from high school to college because you're still playing a role. You're not the star, but you still, I think Jay Billis, you said you got to be a star in your role. And it's a really hard thing to grasp and be effective at early in your career. McMahon from the elbow misses. Vasilovich has it. He's got plenty of time. Didn't have to take it from that deep. And it didn't work out. So Louisville will go to the break with a 43-32 lead. Cardinals have led by as many as 18. Miami hit six of its last 11 shots to get close. Here's Brooke with Chris Mack. Coach, you have a 20 to eight points in the paint advantage over Miami right now. How do you feel about your team's aggressiveness? It's good. I mean, we got to take uh, a few smarter shots there down the stretch, down the end of the first half. But other than that, I thought we were doing a pretty good job of trying to find Steve. And of course, we had some shots. Jordan had some shots. I think our defense was good for the first 15 minutes, five minutes, last five minutes. Uh, we got to get better. Thank you. Chris Brook, thank you very much. Cardinals, the double figure lead. You think you can't do that when he's being nice? He's a nice guy. He is a nice guy. It's not mutually exclusive things from being pleasant and being a. Uh, being, uh, hey, you could be nice and mean. <laughs> mean on the floor, mean right? On the floor. Lights trying to open the second half with the three and good. Shot that wouldn't go now. Miami is taking a lot more shots off the dribble. We'll talk a little bit about that in the second half. Product of the analytics that Jim Laranega so diligently studies. And also defensively, Miami's been better in man. You know, they started this game thinking their opportunity was going to be zone. Well, they've been better in the man situation. Even rebounding the basketball better. What well, Laranega say coming into the game, that there have been about 900 possessions. They've played 30 or 40 maybe in zone. Started in zone tonight. We've had some misses to get things started. War acted like he was going to go dribble handoff. Augusti cuts him off. Stephen Enoch going to the right hand. Here come the Canes, and already he's been able to get one to fall in the first minute here in the second half. Who's going to wake up first, right? Mike's working on Kimball. Fresh Kimball, the transfer from St. Joe's, puts it in the spin cycle. And Wardenberg, who's had trouble with that knee and still is, as he's slow to come back down the court, is able to get the block. Yeah, I, give Warden, call him Darius Perry. I give Wardenberg a ton of credit. I mean, just to be able to move, you've got to anticipate a lot more when you're hurt. And sometimes I think that makes you better. You anticipate the spin, you anticipate. And here he just, he thought he running down the floor. Did you see, he jumped off one leg there, yeah. too. He jumped off. The left leg, the right one is the knee that has the tendonitis in it, is giving him problems, and he's he's had to gut it up. This is the Miami team that's really been hit by injuries. We haven't mentioned, and we should have earlier, as McGusty scores it. Keith Stone, the transfer from Florida, has a knee problem. They're listing him as out indefinitely. He was just starting to get some more time for Aaron Agus' team. And there's another big guy that. The Canes are missing. There's Enoch just bullying his way on Miller. And Stevens had a tough time getting shots to fall. Warren has not. It's 
15 and 8 is Wara. Looking for a double double the first time these two teams play it on opening night. Wara went for 23 and 12, and he's right on target for that. Augusti settled for the three. Perry on the push. Wara. Perry driving, kicking. There's Wardenberg who made the good defensive play, but he stepped on the baseline. Miami's not that far out from this game. It's an 11-point basketball game, and Louisville hadn't come out and, and taken over yet. So you've got to have good offensive possessions. That, that was one of the worst offensive possessions they've had all game. Ball really didn't move. They just settled for a bad shot. You've got to capitalize on the opportunities you get against a really good team. Wardenberg returning to the bench and under the care of the trainers. Enoch again going to work with the left hand, and this time it goes. Gets more and more comfortable going both sides, right shoulder, left hook, left shoulder, right hook. You become more and more difficult to defend, especially if you get deep enough in position. Enoch with the defense, he went straight up at the rim. There's a whistle. The foul is called on Dwayne Sutton. That's his first. Thursday night, we'll have the Pac-12 game of the night on ESPN, the ESPN app. Battle of top 25 teams, number nine, Oregon, taking on Arizona, ranked 24th game in Eugene. And nine Eastern, six Pacific Ducks, won three in a row against the Cats in six of eight the last four seasons. Not many had that type of success against Arizona over a stretch of time. Dana Altman's team's been able to do that. That's Thursday night from the Conference of Champions. Yes. You can't say it like that. You have to say it like that. Who from the Conference of Champions? And your name is? <laughs> Hi, Bill. I'm Dave. <laughs> we will the 12-point lead as Miller takes a break. You think you have it, right? I don't. I mean, okay, I'm right. quite enjoying your company. All right. Opening night for us Tuesday night from the ACC. Oh. Enoch uh, Wardenberg is hanging on to his jersey, <laughs> and he'll be called for the foul. You know, you always watch the body language of, of a uh, bench on a play like that. A physically dominant play. The, the body language is always positive. They always jump up. They're smiling. Someone's always flexing nowadays. I think the flex has become like the, the archer or the three goggles. Yeah. <laughs> the guy goes one for 12 and he's throwing up three goggles or the archer. Relax on that. Let's see what Stephen Enoch did. He raised money to attend his first basketball camp by doing yard work. God bless him. I mean, seriously. Those are the stories you want to hear. He started his career at Connecticut. He missed both free throws. His free throw shooting hasn't been as good this year as it was last year. Still respectable, like 70% yeah. coming in. But it, he was about an 80% free throw shooter last year. He's got touch beyond the three-point line as well as Wara picked up the foul on the misses. So the number's not showing. I mean, this is a really versatile skilled big yes. man. He's just got to continue to develop those instincts. Think less. Think less, which makes you more dangerous. Twelve point lead for Louisville. Wardenberg lines up a three. Here comes Sutton. It's going to be tough for Wardenberg to make that shot. You know, three-point shooting is all about balance. You don't have balance because of the knee issues. It's going to be tough to knock that down consistently. Now, Wardenberg's working hard, but Enoch's just way too big and strong for him. But Sam's making him work for the position in there. And Wardenberg wins and gets the defensive rebound. One shot now for Louisville. Ikes has it rattle out. You get the feeling that the crowd's a little well to sleep here, too. It's almost as if a little Miami run might wake them up as well. Yes. Yeah, and they did. When they cut it to nine, the crowd finally picked up. I'll tell you what, I've decided, as if I didn't think so already, but the redshirt junior from Auckland, New Zealand, Sam Wardenberg, is yeah. off. Yes. He is, he is fighting his rear end off. It's tough enough just to run up and down the floor. But when you think about what he's going up against, is Stephen Enoch, and how hard Enoch works for position to keep him off the glass. We are having a missed shot festival here in opening minutes of the second half. To that end, Ryan McMahon's over at the scores table waiting to waiting to check in for Louisville and perhaps to get that off. Halftime adjustments need to be readjusted. 
Two teams are combining to shoot three of 16 from the floor and 0 of 6 here in the second half. And as a result, it is a 12-point lead for Louisville. We have an 11-point lead at halftime. So not a lot has changed. The good news for Miami, John, they're still within striking distance. A little offensive spurt to get them back in it. And Louisville, by the same token, um, could apply a near knockout punch if they could go on an offense run. Another turnover for the Cardinals. Lights is cut off nicely by Sutton, but he spins away. Lights into the paint. Good ball movement, but also good recovery by the Cardinals defense. Isaiah Wong working on Enoch. I'll have to get it out to Vasilovic. DJ with a pull up. I kind of think Miami had to score to, to get Lovo going again. And that's, that's kind of what it's felt like it, when Miami scores, Lovo has an answer. This is what I, I want to see this from Lovo. Can they put this thing away? Can they close the door? And I'm not talking about the end of the game, I'm talking about right now. Oh, here's a flop. But, uh, that is not a flop. I'm, I'm that glad, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I, Chris, Chris Lights is not yeah. a big guy. I mean, Sutton just turned into him. I'm okay with no offensive fouls. I just like the... And look, we've said this over and over again. It's not on the officials. It's what they're told to do. Right. And they're yeah. actually held accountable to do it, which is what bothers me the most. They're held accountable by people that don't officiate games. How does that make a lot of well, sense? What I would like to see... I think we make too big a deal, both at the college level and the NBA level, about flopping. Oh, just oh. don't call. Don't reward just don't, flops. Just don't call the offensive fouls. It doesn't work for defense, so therefore you you diminish the behavior. Brooke, am I off base here? What do you think? Well, I just think that they have, officials now have three things to consider. Is it a block, is it a charge, or is it a flop? I mean, it, it, it can't be two of the same. To me, I was down here underneath the baseline. That looked like a charge. It didn't look like he flopped at all. And the critique is, do the players' heads snap back first? That's what they're supposed to look for when they call a flop. In almost every situation I've seen that they call flops, it's opposite. The heads aren't moving back. So it's kind of frustrating, to be honest with you. I can only imagine playing. Well, Sutton outweighs Chris Likes by nearly 60 pounds. Yeah, by a little human. Yeah. Like it's... I mean, you know, your head, your head might snap back a little bit. Also, you've been you've almost been trained yeah. to get the call, sell it, get the call. I think where I get frustrated is when it becomes, oh, they're trying to deceive the officials. Mm -hmm. Get over it. This is the big shot if it goes. Vasilovich could have gotten it down to six. And he's got a he has not shot the ball well tonight. But a good shooter. And Kimball gets inside. Miami has the rebound and another chance. Chris Lights might have blocked that shot. Wouldn't be surprised. He's got some hops. What do you, you say? There's a difference between being able to jump and yeah. having hops, right? I, I, I always said I, I could <laughs> jump, but other people have hops. Vasilovich, step back, fire. Not shy, but still can't get it to go. And DJ continuing to struggle from the floor. Vasilovich now just 3 of 12. 2 of 8 from 3. Just disjointed offensively right now for Louisville. You, you got to move, you got to cut it, you got to cut with a purpose. Get the defense to shift. Fresh Kimball, no good. Wardenberg has possession, but Enoch just took it away from him and scored. Wardenberg's going to need help. I mean, he is working his tail off. Wardenberg's going to need help. Chris Mack may be hearing from Ben Howland's attorney as he calls a timeout right before the media break. I think that's a patented move by Howland. Enoch would like to patent this move. It's that much in the potential of this team, but you do have to have that sense of urgency, both when you cut, when you pass. They call out each other's names in practice when they pass to one another. They communicate defensively. I think this team needs to find that urgency on the offensive end, even without the ball. A little over 12 minutes to play. Louisville has been hovering right around this 10 to 15 point lead. It seems like for virtually the entire game. The lead has been as big as 18. Miami's had a couple of possessions in this half with a chance to draw as close as six, but he's not quite able to knock down the bucket. Isaiah Wong on the drive. And a foul was called on the floor. Foul is called on Samuel Williamson. Junior's been sensational. Both Carolina and Syracuse have been scuffling and hard to see.
see the light at the end of the tunnel for those two. Brooke, what do you have on Miami? Well, Coach Larinaga addressing in the timeout so for his guys to keep the ball moving. He'd like to see more rotations, uh, the ball moving from one side of the floor to the next. And also talked about this point in the game. He said, listen, we were about at this point a week ago, and assuming he meant the Clemson game where they pulled out the win in overtime. He said, just stick together. Everybody trusts each other and move the ball. We'll be fine. The big issue here, I look at the stats. I, I really, stats don't tell the whole story. Four to six for Miami is, it's really hard to win that way. I understand how you're going to play in terms of clearing space and making plays. But at some point, you got to make the defense work by creating brothers. That's a great look. That's what McGusty just yeah. did. Wardenberg pays it off with the three. Now, that's a catch and shoot three. That's something that Laranega wanted his team to improve on this year. But after looking at the analytics in the early part of the season, they really hadn't. And so he tweaked his offense a little bit to allow for dribble and shoot because, candidly, the Canes are better at that. But that was a catch and shoot opportunity that Wardenberg knocked down. And now Miami has another opportunity down eight and with the ball. Vasilovich. DJ just can't quite get it going tonight. That would have been something to get that back to within five. This is a big possession right here offensively for Louisville. You, you've got to attack at some point. I would love to get the ball back inside, even if it's Jordan Moore. He's got the advantage. Williamson, the freshman, working the high pick from Williams. Malik a long way from the basket, and the shot clock's at five. Sutton turns corner, Zilovich reaching in. And I think the foul is going to be called on Wardenburg. Third foul on Wardenburg. NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts in Dallas, 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central. Luka and the Mavs taking on the Nuggets. That'll be followed by the Bucks and what used to be the Warriors. Giannis and the Bucks in that role against Golden State. The coverage begins with Stephen A's pregame sports center on ESPN and the ESPN app. Ooh. Sutton rejects Wong. Wardenberg pulls it out there. Lights almost lost it out of bounds. Chris to the bucket. Spotted away by Williams. Miami still has it. Shot clock at 10. Likes gets fouled on the three. Foul is going to be on Samuel Williamson. And for the second time tonight, Chris Likes will go to the free throw line with a chance to shoot three. It's an unfortunate end to this possession for Louisville because they played great defense to get back and take things away. This was actually the second block on the possession. But if you don't stay with it and finish it, if you lose Chris Likes, ends up finding a way. Look, he creates so much space. He's got to create a lot of space. Allen Iverson did the same thing. You don't realize how much space he created. I'm going to wait and see. I might have spoken too soon. His foot might have been on the line there. I guess not. I looked at the I replay. It was too. But they're still leaving him on the free throw line. But Miami is closer than it's been since it was 18 10. Let's have a look at this now. What do you think, John? From that angle, Stop it looks tell. like it, but. Whatever. Right, not <laughs> down know, all like, three. I don't throws. know what to say. It was or it wasn't. I can't tell. <laughs> and either way, it's 51 46. Here we go. 16 for likes. Five point game. Closest it's been since the early stages of the first half. Louisville in need of a bucket to try to reassert itself. War. No. Vasilovich the rebound. This is interesting time because this is where you are tested. The, 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 the mental toughness of this team, the, the ability to finish for this team will be tested here down the stretch. Not a big challenge to have. Augusti on McMahon. Off the window, no good. Nothing but white shirts around the rebound as Sutton pulls it away. Inside nine minutes to go. Canes on a 9-2 run. Well, the lead's been fairly quiet offensively tonight. He now has seven, and the lead is back to seven. Now they're away. Likes. 
Fighting for the rebound, and Wong has it in the fresh shot clock, which remembers 20 seconds now for the Hurricanes. Wardenberg to the bucket, and he's fouled, and he'll shoot a couple. Extra possessions, they kill you. You know, you really didn't have to defend in the first possession. Miami just sits there, dribbles, Chris likes great space, gets a shot. But you can't fall asleep when a shot goes up. You've got to locate rebounders, box them out. A little fundamentals at times are the hardest thing to do. Wardenberg on that sore knee and double figure rebound. He's not a great free throw shooter, under 60% on the season, but he makes the first one. And it's back to a six point game. You know, we've been talking about what Miami, uh, what Louisville needs to do because of the high ceiling for the Cardinals. But how about Miami shorthanded tonight and with every opportunity to cash it in and just let this thing get away from them? Well, they've shown some fight and some grit to just keep clawing and hanging in this game. And here we are, eight minutes to go, and Laranega's team just down by five. The way they play offensively is really difficult to defend when they make shots. Really difficult to defend one-on-one -on -one basketball because no one really does that. And defensively in the man, Miami's been much, much better. Sutton. Offensive rebound by Enoch, and he had a chance for the three-point play, but it wouldn't go. And when you come back to KFC Young Center, Stephen Enoch will be out the Chicagoland area. So drive what I drive. Drive a hawk. Hawk. have a finish here in Louisville. Stephen Enoch, 10 points and nine rebounds onto the Knights. Stepping to the free throw line, his team holding to a five point lead. Miami has been toward the bottom of the country in a lot of defensive categories. Yeah. So why have they been so successful in the second half against Louisville tonight? I think you have to give Miami credit. They've been good on the ball. They've kept the ball out of the paint, but they've also been able to be better because there's been a lot of floating on the offensive end. Floaters on offense make any defense good. And the backside has been in position. You keep the ball in front, you're going to have success. Enoch makes the two free throws. Lead back to seven. Crowd trying to exhort the Cardinal D. Gusty by Wara to the bucket. It's blocked, but it's a goal 10. We'll count the basket for Cam McGusty. McGusty, the transfer from Oklahoma now with 14. That's a tough situation, too. I mean, you want Jordan Ward to keep his man in front at the same time. You do want to show a little bit to deter the drive without giving up that corner three. Brian McMahon didn't show enough. At the same time, you can't leave his man and open and give an open three. Wara cutting. Great job by the freshman Wong to get in there and knock the ball out of bounds. Well, Miami's playing like they want to win this game. They're playing with a sense of urgency, and I'll tell you, the same sense of urgency, if it's given from the Louisville squad, this isn't a basketball game. Give credit to Miami for the fight. Enoch working on Miller inside. Enoch missed it and then went over the top and fouled him. And the best thing Rodney Miller did there was forced to catch a little further from the basket. If that catch is five feet from the basket like it was in the first half, that's a layup or an easy offensive rebounding opportunity. He did his work early, forced to catch about eight feet away. That's a tough shot. It's only the first foul on Enoch, but it does send Miller to the free throw line to shoot the one and one. Not a good free throw shooter on the year. Just five out of 13. Out of 14. But you can even see what's going on with Miami. He's comfortable with what they're doing defensively. He didn't put anybody on the line. He just sent him back and said, let's identify the basketball, lock it in defensively in the half court, force them to execute in the half court. And McMahon had the shot fake and Vasilovich fouled him. If you, his first first if you eliminate transition from the game, if you're Miami, you totally eliminate it from the game, you have the opportunity to be a good defensive team because you see the basketball. You identify players. You identify threats. You're always a better team that way, and they've done a good job of eliminating the transition game here in the second half. 
Miami still with a foul to give before Louisville shoots free throws and Vasilovich comes over the top and makes the steal. Likes by Perry, reverse, and it won't go, and Enoch pulls it away. Here come the Cardinals. Sutton. Sutton. And that's what we're talking about. It could have been a layup on one end, transition opportunity, sit down layup. Haven't been many of them for Louisville in the second half. Enoch with that rebound got a double double. You see, Sutton's just a point away from one, and War also has one. So, despite all of that, Louisville just up by seven. Gusty was working and they counted the basket. That might have been an NBA continuation going for Gusty and the fouls on Sutton, his second. The officials are even talking about because that whistle came before the shot. But I like it. I like if they do count that shot because I think that should be in the game. But but I think that if you take a look at there's the foul. I mean, yeah, that, that was before. That was definitely before the shot. No shot. Okay, they got together and talked it over. And McGusty will be shooting a one and one because of just what yep. you said. Obviously, if it were two shot foul, it would have been in the act. It would have been an and one. Foul on the floor. Makes the first. Back to a six point game. Everybody talks in theory like, yeah, we got to have the continuation. The hard thing is, the continuation also means the second foul might be coming. <laughs> Nobody's going to allow you to get that shot out. Augusti makes them both. He's having a very solid offensive night. Five point lead for Louisville. Perry tried the wraparound pass. He'll advise he's going to live to tell about it as Miami knocks it out of bounds. You know, as, as much as a part of me does want to be critical uh, to Louisville, I've got to give credit to the defense for Miami, except on that one. Just fell asleep with Zay Wong. That was a veteran against a freshman right there. They just zipped it right by his noggin, and War puts it in. He has 17. But Miami's scrambling defensively very well, playing with a sense of urgency on that side of the floor, and that's what's kept them in this game. Inside five minutes to go. McGusty with a long one, and it was a two foot clearly on the line. Brent Hampton was all over that, immediately called it a two-point bucket. McGusty now with 20. Great closeout, the hands high from Augusty. kept McMahon from pulling the trigger. Perry now, no good. Scramble for the ball. Laura on the side, and it'll be hurricane basketball. You know, down the stretch, will be tested. Communication's the most important thing down the stretch in particular. And the last possession where they gave up that open jumper, it was just bad communication. No one knew who had the ball. No one stopped the ball, and it was an easy in rhythm jump shot. Inside four and a half to go. We've, we've got to finish here. Louisville a 13 and a half point favorite, which is if they were going to run away with this game. Miami kept scratching and clawing at one point. Down 30 to 10 were the Hurricanes. Long misses from the corner, but now just a five-point game as we head toward four minutes. Well, that's also set up the fact that Louisville's lost two in a row. Losing three in a row would be devastating for this team, but man, we've talked about, you know, do they have that fortitude, right? That intestinal fortitude. Well, losing three in a row, three, three in a row would be tough. That'll help avoid that. Darius Perry will be in one of the fouls on Rodney Miller. But Perry just got the floor spread and took it right to the cup and right into the chest of Miller to have the chance for three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Hoppers is one of two places. 
Hurricanes have not won on the road in ACC play under Larry Nega, the other being Wake Forest. The Bill, meanwhile, trying to avoid a three-game losing streak, and it will be a painful one. Kentucky yes. in two home games yes. right now, seven-point lead, 3.47 to go. It'd be really painful because when you look at it, two in a row, but this is an opportunity, Miami, then at Notre Dame, then at Pittsburgh, before going to Duke. This is an opportunity to get yourselves right. I mean, this is still a team, in my opinion, that has the potential to be really good by the end of the season. But again, being really good, he's doing a lot of the little things right. And those are the things we haven't seen yet. And Darius Perry finishes off a much needed three point play for the Cardinals, and the lead stretches back to eight. Sam Wardenberg had leg just won't quite hold up for him. We mentioned a couple of times he has 10 90s in the knee, and he's the travel. I don't know how much that was a contributing yeah. factor, but it seemed to be some. I think there are times you got your limitations in that sense. You just got to be a ball mover. Dribble handoff screener. He's not going to get by anybody from the perimeter. Well, now, after being challenged by the Canes, Louisville can push it back to double figures with a bucket on this trip. McMahon for three. <laughs> Take a timeout. A six nothing Louisville run. We talked about Ryan McMahon earlier in this game. He got one to go and he threw the lob and it felt like he had a better rhythm, better body language, better feel in the game. And that was a great read. And he's feeling it. This enter Sandman playing? <laughs> Is that his, like, walk-off music if he hits a big three? <laughs> He'll take it. He's scuffling a little bit. He's an excellent, excellent shooter, as most of you watched him over the course of his career know. He's been scuffling by his standards, but did a two of four tonight. And that one was a rather large one. Coming up next on ESPN 9 Eastern, Kentucky and Georgia. Cats ranked 14th. You can catch it live on the ESPN app. You can see Maxie and the Cats against Anthony Edwards yeah. and the Dogs. I didn't do Anthony Edwards justice early. Uh, he's terrific. Physical, strong. How did freshmen get so physically gifted that early in their life? I guess I just didn't have it like that. <laughs> I was normal. Laura <laughs> picks up his third. Not to go off on a tangent, but Louisville has a freshman, Aiden yes. Gahan, who we have not seen tonight, but he. <laughs> He looks like a fully grown man. He's got the greatest nickname ever. <laughs> the Irish Hulk. Native seems, of Dublin. Which seems redundant. You know, the Hulk is green. It just. Darius Perry had the three point trip a couple times back to really give Louisville a little room to exhale here as we head toward two and a half minutes. Wara. Chased down by Sutton, gets on the deck, but. Wayne can corral it. Miami will have the basketball. Sutton's my guy. I, I really, I really like him. He's that guy that just seems to always be around the ball, both offensively and defensively. Gives great effort and doesn't demand much. Sutton just a point away from a double double. Last time Louisville had three guys with double double, and only have two was in the. National semifinals 1986 against LSU, the year the Cardinals went on to win the national championship. And the court is kind of homage to that, is it not? The, the, the Dunkin' Cardinal, is that correct? It is. Yeah. I, I read the game notes every now and then, yep. Well done, because you're not a big fan of the various designs yeah, on the court no. in some cases, but you're okay with the Duncan yeah, Cardinals. Oregon, you got the whole forest on the court. Like, yeah. What are you doing? You, you cut down a forest to make a court, and then you paint a forest on it. Paying tribute, maybe? There's all these colors. I mean, it's just a little overdone. Call me classic. John, you don't like Oregon's court? I think it's awesome. No, no I'm a purist. Oh, you're, you, you're you born? Millennials. What? You millennials. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually not a millennial. I'm three months away, technically, from a millennial. So I'm, I'm in your generation. I don't I think it's cool. I, I do love the old school cardinal board. It's just, I think it looks great. And for all the people back in John's neighborhood, get out of his yard. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 
Perry with the layup. I feel like I develop ADD every time I watch a game at Oregon Court. That just kills me. Louisville has controlled things close to the basket, outscoring Miami 38 to 12 in the paint. We expected that. Yeah, that's not, that's not a big surprise. Now, Light's going over the top of war. He's going to be called for the foul. After Kentucky and Georgia on Sports Center tonight on ESPN, John Anderson in the Big Z, the Z Force, Zubin Mahente. Be there to give you all your highlights. NBA draft expert Mike Schmitz breaks down Anthony Edwards. John was talking about in his draft stock. Rachel Nichols sits down with Luca Sports Center at the College Hoops. It's on ESPN and the ESPN app. Could you imagine Luka Doncic playing in college basketball? He's so good. It'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I see Jerry West said that he yeah. would or would be better than Dirk? I, I tell you. Whatever. I'm not going to say. I, yeah, I don't it's know. early. I it's don't early. Know. Yeah. Uh, but his skill set is more diverse. He he's a point guard mm. with that size and ability to shoot already. That was something Dirk developed over time. His ability to make plays on his own. Mm. He developed that. This guy already had it at like 12. Louisville is up by 13. I'll just let that sit there for a minute. Laura with another rebound to add to his double-double night and in under 90 seconds to play in the 13-point lead. The Cardinals, who were challenged by a depleted, but tough and scrappy and relentless Miami team, got challenged in the second half. Canes couldn't quite get over the hump and go Louisville's credit. They made big plays when they needed to. And I might be grumpy at times, but I do think of myself as a glass half full <laughs> guy. And, and you do have to be pleased with the finish for Louisville. They, they, they've brought much better energy. That helps. They, they've communicated better defensively. They've attacked more on the offensive end. And I think the crowd getting back into it helped. Uh, Miami. Takes the 15 points, or now trailing by 15, as you say, Louisville up by 15. So now the Cardinals are going to put the brakes out. You don't call it a losing streak when you lose two in a row, but a couple of disappointing performances for the Cardinals. So what can they build on from this tonight? I think it's the attention to detail and the sense of urgency. You, you have to get back to the point where you understand your potential, but the responsibility of having potential like that has to be has to have an emphasis on the details. Have to have an emphasis on the sense of urgency because that's the only thing keeping them from being a much better team. When they cut with a purpose, they're really good. When they pass with a purpose, they're really good. Like I said, Chris Mack in, in shoot around today. If we move like that in the game, no one can stop us. I agree with him completely. So the potential is still there. And they're, they're an older veteran team. They should know how to yeah. navigate things. They have Notre Dame coming up Saturday. Those are some, those are some tough road trips coming up. Pittsburgh, yeah. an improved team under Jeff Capel. And then obviously the game at Duke on January 18th for Louisville. The debut of college game day that week. Good for you. No one's happy for you here. No, no one is. I'm for excited is. for you. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> Even when I worked for other networks, it was still the best. <laughs> well, you're filling some really big shoes. Yeah. I'm stepping in for Lafonso Ellis, who was my partner last year, now moves to college game day. Next He's year. way nicer than me. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's okay. I, like, but, there are people who I'd probably be offended if they said that, but Fonz, no. no. He's oh. nicer than everybody. Malik Williams with the rebound. He fouled Malik Williams. What does Seth feel like when people say that? Oh, Fonz is the nicest guy. Seth's sitting there. No one's even saying anything about him. Well, Seth's a wonderful guy, but he knows he's grumpy. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's why he and I get along, I yeah, guess. I guess so. <laughs> he's, he's comfortable in his grouchiness. <laughs> <laughs> Although, saying, you, know, you need to say Fonz is the nicest guy yeah. in basketball because if you just say he's the nicest guy on our set, you're just condemning yes. him with a faint phrase yeah. that Seth and Billis and me on there. For the Cardinals, number 10, Samuel Williamson, number 13, David Johnson. Boy, Wardenberg goes to the bench. I mean, he gave it, he gave it everything, man. I was really impressed with his effort tonight, uh, doing so on that knee that's been ailing and getting constant treatment. But 
He fought to the bitter end. And there's Wara putting together another double double night is Williams tries AR to dude. give. Yeah, all those double double Louis stuff is really good. A that double double stuff lead. is really good, Wara but we're happily miserable so over here. Good. He just can't. I'm telling you, there's not a team in the country that has a matchup for Jordan Wara. And I do feel like there is another level in there. If he finds it, look out. That's all I'm saying. If he finds it, he is the best player in the country. Williamson puts it home. So there are some perhaps breathing a little easier right now. Augusti. Knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Kings. You know, there's still a lot to answer. I know a lot of people are wondering how's the pack line defense going to work. I think it's it's something that takes time because you do have to find a balance. Tony Bennett won a national championship with pack line defense, but it was because they opened up their offense. So you've got to find that balance between the two where you are a lockdown defensive team. Hard to do against this Miami squad who's just going to clear it out and, and attack. Locked out with his elbow. <laughs> They've got a couple of bigs, Enoch and Williams, who have basically split the center position. They've been highly, highly productive. I think there's no let up. Yeah, big athletic veteran guys. Not many teams have two pieces like that as Walker tries to spin. But that goes back to Wardenburg, too. You yeah. gotta think about what they dealt with all game. And you know that he's hurt. Hey, look, he may not get worse by playing, but please believe it doesn't feel good. Jay Vasilovich, it's been a long time coming for DJ, who's a terrific offensive player, hasn't necessarily had his best night, and the clock is going to hit zero, and Louisville's little mini skid is over. 74-58, the final. It's been fun, partner. Yeah, I hope Let's we get to do it again. The season. What do you say? For John Crisp and Brooke Weisbrot and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Reese Davis, saying thanks for watching. Let's go back to the studio right now, guys. R.D., thank you so much. David Moretti, Jr. from Italy, getting ready to...